Hey everyone, I'm going to talk about the October NFT reward competition and the new changes coming to the game, some permanent and some not, as well as the legendary tree bundle sale happening soon, and finally show off a party box build I made that you could use for the next competition. The next competition will be on October 4th, 2022, and the meta will be Party Box. A new craft that will require one gift parcel, one food parcel, and one wooden box in order to craft. Party Box will sell for 2 million in-game cash, and give 1.25 million points per each. So 20 million in-game cash, and 12.5 million points for a batch of 10. The party box will be crafted in the boxing facility, taking only 30 seconds to craft and will be stored in the storehouse. The reward for this competition will be a fabric plant ghost card, which should reduce the crafting time required for any crafts in the fabric plant, which will help with certain builds such as uniform, fabric box, and blue steel builds. The reward structure for this competition is the same as the previous NFT reward competition requiring a top 4500 placement in addition to a minimum of 50,000 points in order to qualify for a prize, with better placements having a higher rarity version of the Fabric Plant Ghost Card. In my opinion, this Fabric Plant Ghost Card will be a valuable asset. Anyone who has dealt with a Fabric Box build before knows that there are a lot of Fabric Plants in play. So if you can reduce the craft time of them and save you multiple spots, it will be extremely valuable. Just like how the Gusty Wing Ghost Cards are for the Windmills. Moving on, we have some changes coming to Townstar, although most will be temporary. The only permanent change is that Crafting Baguette will now require Flower instead of Wood now. The other changes are temporary until further notice. Crafting baguettes will require one butter, one dough, and one flour during the competition. Wooden boxes will have a 2 minute craft timer instead of the regular 25 seconds during the competition. This will help people throttle wooden box production. Cabernet vines and cocoa trees no longer need wood to grow, so that officially means for the time being, no crops will require wood to grow which will mean excess wood will not be required for the build to operate, which is good news. The amount of cash and points for gift parcel were reduced, but notice nothing was said about eggs. This is because eggs are still boosted and will still sell for 10,000 in-game cash each, or 100,000 per batch of 10. So once again, eggs will be the meta for cash, so make sure you're selling eggs to build up cash quickly in the beginning. Moving on to the next topic, there are two new NFTs coming out to Townstar, which are the Legendary Tree Farm and Legendary Oak Tree Farm. These will first be sold in the bundle, which comes with two of each, for a total of four NFTs in the bundle. They will be sold on the Gala Game Store on October 3rd, 2022, and will cost $270 equivalent in Towncoin during the first two days and rise to $360 afterwards, if any remain. There will be another sale in the future which will sell these NFTs separately by themselves. The price is yet to be determined, but I speculate anywhere between $90 and $120 for each of these. Both of these legendary tree farms will only require one water to grow instead of the usual five water and be 33% faster to produce wood or oak wood. The legendary tree farm will grow in 20 seconds instead of the usual 30 seconds, and the legendary oak tree farm will grow in 1 minute and 20 seconds instead of 2 minutes. For reference on how much space you will be saving using these from the reduced timers alone, every two legendary tree farms will effectively save you one space. Keeping the reduced water requirement in mind, you may be able to save an additional space due to needing less water for it to grow. If you want my opinion on whether the bundle is worthwhile or not, probably not for most people and yes to a few, and here's my explanations. This bundle is going for 270 and if you use both legendary tree farms and legendary oak tree farms in your build, you will save two or three, maybe four spots from what I just pointed out. 
You know what's going to save you two or three spots as well? A rare water tower that gives four passive water. And as of recording this video, a rare water tower is trading on OpenSea for around $200 equivalent in Gala or Ethereum. Plus, water towers are overall more useful because the passive water will help you fulfill any water requirement, such as from crops or livestock. And as far as we know right now, a rare water tower specifically is worth 14 town points, whereas the new legendary tree farms are worth zero town points. This is just one comparison I made that seems more beneficial overall than what is being sold. And if you already have a passive water NFT, then the reduced water requirement for these legendary tree farms probably doesn't interest you that much. Also, these legendary trees will suffer negatively from these same effects, uh, dirty, shade, and salty. If they didn't, this would be a whole other story, but they still do. To those who it is worthwhile to consider is people looking to absolutely max the potential of their builds. I believe 5 bundles will just about cover all the trees you will need for the 16x16 grid we currently use. 5 bundles would give you 10 legendary tree farms and 10 legendary oak tree farms, which if you were to place all of that would have the efficiency of 15 tree farms and 15 oak tree farms, which is enough in most situations. You're going to have trees in your build anyways, so this is a guaranteed way to improve efficiency if you're willing to pay the price. Here is the no NFT build I made for Party Box. Keep in mind that as of recording and testing this build, the new additions and changes I've discussed haven't been added to the game. I tweaked and tested this build as much as I could and I ended at this layout. So to give you a realistic rate, this build should be able to pull off 2.4 party box per hour on average. That is at least 2.4 food parcel, gift parcel, and wooden boxes per hour. It is incredibly balanced and it really doesn't have to sell items that often. It requires an ocean edge to have some salt fields on green timers. It also requires two adjacent open edges because of the shallow mines that are used in the build. The fourth edge can either be an open edge or a river edge for greater water supply. If you decide to do this in a desert biome, you will run into the issue of having too much silica. So believe it or not, I do not recommend a desert biome for this exact build I made right here. If you can get a plains biome with an ocean edge, perfect, and a forest biome will work as well. If you're going to copy this build, I want you to know that this build is so specific to get everything to work so well. Everything has to face the way it's facing in this build, so remember to rotate your buildings. And everything is done for a reason, so you're going to have to listen closely. The reason I have windmills and other buildings facing each other is because of something called ghost doors. It is a technique that allows the worker or animal to enter and exit from any direction instead of just one single direction. This boosts the efficiency of the build a lot. The lumber mills and pottery shops are all facing the ways they are facing because it allows those buildings to prioritize collecting the items they need first. This pottery shop still needs one energy to operate and it's set up in a way to grab the energy before this lumber mill does, which is the one making lumber. The lumber mill down here is the one making wooden boxes. It also still needs one energy in that spot which it will grab first before any other building does, and that's okay because it will be the last to grab lumber, so its production rate is throttled that way. Now the chromium and limestone mines will grab lumber first before the iron mine does, and then before the beekeeper does, and lastly the lumber mill crafting wooden boxes at the bottom. All my mines have passive water drums supplied to them, but because there are ponds nearby, their craft time is slowed down. This is necessary, and it is also ne necessary that they are shallow mines, 
because shadow mines are even slower. If you have a mountain edge, this build will not work because you won't be able to use shallow mines. I'm using a single trade depot to sell with one gasoline per sale. I do not recommend more than one gasoline per sale with this setup. I'm using 11 loggers, 8 farm tractors, 4 ATVs, 1 forklift, and 1 beekeeper to collect all the items. For gasoline production, I have a different setup going on here. It's still passive energy and water drum set up here. It's just that the refinery making petroleum is more tucked away in the back. And the refinery making gasoline is still squeezed in right here between the two power plants and two water pumps. I have two crude oil pumps to supply the crude oil necessary to refine petroleum and then gasoline although I can get away with using just one. They are far away, but it seems to work just fine. Also, another specific thing if you're planning to use both of your crude oil pumps, you want to make sure that both of the crude oil pumps and the sand mines are all ready to produce their crafting materials back to back. So here's what you can do to achieve that. Turn both of your crude oil pumps and your sand mine off, then turn them all back on. Now when your forklift goes to pick up one crude oil, by the time it deposits it, the other crude oil pump will be ready and the forklift will go for it. And then it should get the silica from the sand mine, either before or after all that. If you don't do this, you will run into an issue where the forklift is not going to go for the water over here that is required for this clay field that needs the one water. And the reason I have a clay field that still needs warm water and a well with a red timer due to pollution is to throttle clay production, which will greatly reduce the amount of times you have to sell clay lumps and waste less of the forklift's time. Of course, there are different solutions to this. If you leave just one crude oil pump like I did right here, you won't have this issue, but you may just barely have enough gas for the build to run. I have tested this and managed to get the build to run still without running out of gasoline but you're gonna want to watch out for that for the whole competition or you could also leave the clay in an area with three passive water most of the time the pottery shop worker will come to pick it up anyway since the forklift will be busy I didn't have a chance to test this but it may work better than having this method right here Okay, so I'm not going to explain how every single item is crafted, but if you really want to hear those details, I recommend you watch both of my videos containing the food parcel build showcase and the gift parcel build showcase. What I am going to try to explain is what else I have going on, because the way I have all my windmills, bakeries, and cakeries crafting specific items in specific locations is important as well. I have seven windmills crafting salt, one green timer and six red timers i have 12 windmills crafting sugar one green timer and 11 red timers i have 11 windmills crafting flour all red timers. Damn. One wind turbine, green timer. This will craft all the energy I need to pace the lumber and wooden box production so it's not out of control. Five milk barns, two chicken coops, 21 meadows, two feed mills, and one throft total right here. And yes, I am making some feed on the side to supply to the cows. Four salt fields on green timers. One salt field on yellow timer. Four sugarcane fields on green timers. One sugarcane field on yellow timer. Five wheat fields. Fourteen tree fields. Three cabernet vines one pumpkin patch, one cocoa tree with a deep yellow timer, one oak tree farm on a yellow timer, 
one peppermint field, one strawberry field, one beehive making honey, and one clover field. Two bakeries making butter. One bakery making baguettes next to the storehouses. One bakery making dough farther away from the storehouses. One cakery making pumpkin pies. One cakery making batter. And one cakery making cake farthest away from the storehouses. One candy shop making candy canes. One bakery making jam. One chocolate shop making decorated cake. One chocolate shop making chocolate bars. One winery making cabernet wine. One winery making sangria. Three power plants for all the energy for the mines. One mine making limestone, one making chromium, doesn't matter which order. One shallow mine making iron. One lumber mill making lumber, one lumber mill making oak barrels, and one lumber mill making wooden boxes. One pottery shop, strong yellow timer. If you place it somewhere else and it is a red timer, you definitely won't be able to do more than three party blocks per hour without NFTs. Otherwise, it's not much of a problem if you find a way to provide full passive energy to it by uh, switching spots with a boxing facility, for example. One sand mine with a red timer. Um, if it's not a red timer, because that edge is a desert for some reason switch it with a boxing facility over here so it can be a red timer in this area if your sand mine is not a red timer this setup will break and you will end up with too much silica and not enough energy used to throttle the rest of the build one glass factory three boxing facilities one making food parcel one making gift parcel and one that'll make party box doesn't matter which one's making what and you could switch them around with the pottery shop and sand mines like I just explained if you need to. As for storage, three storehouses, three warehouses, two silos, two lumber yards, a pantry, and the fuel storage which I forget to mention but you know you need the fuel storage anyways. <laughs> Hopefully that's all bases touched. Okay, so after the changes have been implemented, you can probably get away with one less logger, one less lumber yard, and maybe even one less tree because you won't need wood for the Cabernet vines and cocoa trees during co the competition. So spare wood will not be necessary at all, but still make sure that all your buildings are getting the wood they need to operate. Also during the competition, baguettes will need one less dough and butter per baguette, as well as one flour and no longer needing two wood. So this should further improve your rate overall. And lastly, I did say average 2.4 an hour because that's what I was getting the day before after running it for about five hours. I'm getting lower reads this time just because I've been recording today and it slowed down my frames per second significantly. Like I'm getting between 6 to 8 frames per second. But um, I'm fairly sure you can get more than 2.4 an hour with this after the changes have been implemented. And a few additional tweaks have been made with no NFTs. So using NFTs would further improve that rate. I believe that's everything about this build explained. Feel free to ask questions and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If you copy this build exactly, I'm sure you will do well in the competition. Like my previous builds, I worked very hard getting this one to work. I would love it if you could like this video and feel free to share with your buddies who plan on competing on the competition as well. Comment if you have any questions or feedback, if you think you have an idea that can improve the build further, feel free to share your idea. Maybe you thought of something I didn't. 
I'll update the Townstar playbook with the new meta information after it goes live in the game. Oh, and if this video gets 100 likes, I'll share a leak of what I'm working on with the next Townstar playbook feature update. Now, I'm currently working on testing that feature out. It's going to be a great piece of information once it's live. And if you haven't subscribed, well, now's a good time to click that subscribe button so you can keep following along. Thank you so much for your support. Best of luck to you if you're competing in the competition, and thanks for watching.